Hello, Graham Norton here. And for the past three years, I've been hosting the Graham Norton Radio Show with Waitrose here on Virgin Radio. And what a three years it's been. So this is it. New station, new year, new show. Uh, sadly, same old me. It's either a new low or a new high. I'll, if you play a record, I'll decide. OK. Martha Collison, hello. Hello. Hey, uh, what's on the trolley today, Martha? A portobello mushroom tart to tan. <laughs> but I really like the writing enough to just go, I want to see how it ends. All I could see was my puppy's face. And I just <laughs> like, this show is so long, let me go home to my dog. Uh, welcome, Whoopi Goldberg. So <laughs> lovely to see you. <laughs> and you. Last Christmas, I gave him my heart. I'm up in space. What woman? I never knew what love was. Now I reach for the stars, climb every mountain high. It's been a long How Salt crazy burn. salt burn would go. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's ever, crazy. It's mad. I've got a wee idea for something that may or may not work. I'm working on it just now. And if it does, then it's going to be even more shocking than this one. You feel like saying to all of them, how do you sleep at night? Yeah. How do they sleep at night? Because they, obviously, they weren't entirely cooperative with the drama that we've been <laughs> putting on. Did you, did you get to rehearse? No, not really. We had like a week yeah. of prep, but like that was mainly like to get our hair cut and stuff. <laughs> Oh, so nice to see some of my lovely guests there again. But hey, all things must come to an end. So it's a goodbye to weekends from me. But you're not getting rid of me that easily. I'll still be doing bits and bobs around the place here at Virgin Radio. Thank you so much for all of your emails, texts and messages every Saturday and Sunday. I've loved hearing from you. So join me one more time as I bid farewell to the Graham Norton Radio Show with Waitrose with a look back at some of our best bits. And what better way to start than with my good friend Maria McCurlin. Here are some of our favourite bits from Graham's Guide. Virgin Radio. Maria. Yes, morning. Just call me Madonna, please, this morning. <laughs> Thank you. I'm changing my name. Mazadonna. Mazadonna, that's right. Now, what a lovely evening it was. And I, I'm so relieved to tell you. Well, I don't know if you've spoken because I wasn't really listening to you. But, <laughs> sorry, um, it was great. She was great. Yeah, really, really good. Do you know, she is the soundtrack to mine and your lives. Yeah, and all our lives. She's the sa- same age as me. There was a lot more armography than yeah, normal. She, d- she doesn't do those squat jumps, squat jumps, you know, that she did for her. Why would you? No, exactly. And like me, she's rocking the trend of wearing a knee brace. It, it, who knew you were so on Ahead trend? Ahead of the it? game. Yeah. But I am going to change it to Madonna's because it's black. Hers was black and mine is more sporty. Yes, yours has cutouts, which <laughs> is also very sexy. <laughs> you know, I want to just talk to you about briefly because you have encountered fame in your past and indeed now. Um, you have seen the rise and fall. Should I get a pen and write this down? Yes, please, if you would. <laughs> I wish to talk to you about Taylor Swift. Ah. I love Taylor Swift, but I feel that they, we're on the cusp. You know when somebody gets too big? I think we're they can try. The I think they can try and go for her, but it's not going to work because those that Swifty army are so devout. And also because she's not it's not like they've they've, you know, uh, drunk the Kool-Aid or bought the yeah, snake yeah, oil. Yeah. She's good. She knows what she she's She is doing. really good. She's got her head. I mean, the 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 most surprising thing to me about Taylor Swift is when you talk to her, when I talk to her backstage, is it's like you can't be this normal. You must be doing an impression of a normal person because she's so down to earth, so totally, seemingly unfazed by what's happened to her. Yeah. And you've got to think, how is that possible? But she does an amazing job of it. And she's, you know, uh, so pleasant and lovely to everyone she meets. I, I, I have so much time for her. Yeah, I really like too. her. And I, if I, someone's you... going to have, if someone's going to have uh, that army... <laughs> I'm glad it's her because I think she will, you know, use her power for good. You know, I was listening to Nick Grimshaw the other day. Were you? Why yeah. is that? Because he, he was on the radio. He was on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that? Why were you listening to him? No, I was at your house, <laughs> if I seem to recall. Yeah, and uh, he was talking about how uh, before he was 30, yeah. he never drank water. 
I think I was about 55 before I drank water. Well, you see, we are of the generation where water wasn't really a thing. No. You know, if you wanted a glass of water, you'd normally put some squash in it <laughs> out of the tap. <laughs> um, and that was you done. That was you know, breakfast, lunch and dinner in one. Oh, that was delicious. That was delicious. My, was it my waddy squash here? Or was that in Ireland, my waddy? I don't know. I think it's Irish. Yeah. I don't uh, think yeah, it yeah. made it across the water, my waddy squash. But I could be wrong. Somebody will tell me. Um, Imagine trying to give that to a child now. Yeah. They would just look at you like you were trying to kill them. Yeah, like, why exactly. Would, why do you want me to drink that? That's it's disgusting. disgusting. You put water into something. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but also then I, I watched a video on YouTube, Graham, where you can make little sort of stepping stones, this is. For, <laughs> sounds so naff. Stepping stones out of concrete. So I got some concrete, but it had too much aggregate in, which oh. is the sort of shingly stuff. So I made these little stepping stones and they waited for them to dry and then I painted them. I had some spare purple paint. Oh, my God. And now they just look like chocolate chip cookies at the best times or a massive cow pad <laughs> in a line. <laughs> massive brown pad. I put a picture on the Twitter sphere and I think, yeah... How Pat is I feel like so someone far. needs to do an intervention. At some point, you could just go, the garden is fine. No, but that's the thing. Adrian Charles wrote a piece about the garden, getting on top of the garden, and you think, ah, sit back in your rocking chair and enjoy the garden. But then things keep growing. Yeah, but there's no reason to have big purple cow pats ruining the whole thing. You did that. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Nature didn't do it. Nature had <laughs> nothing to do with that. As I sit in this chair and look around the studio, it is amazing to think some of the people who have sat in that chair opposite me. We've had mega movie stars, best-selling authors, fantastic pop stars, and hey, who else can boast a first lady of the United States? I know, right? I love Adele, number one. And um, I love a lot of her songs, but I love Set Fire to the Rain, in part because I love the metaphor, I love the image of it. And five years ago, I took a... One night off from my presidential campaign. That may have made the difference, but <laughs> nevertheless, it was blissful to go see Adele in concert. It's Adele's fault, everyone. In in Miami, and I, I love the staging of it. You know, the waters yeah. coming down, the whole deal. And then I got to meet Adele right before the pandemic. I had dinner with her, and... She is just as charming and delightful um, in person as I thought she'd be. So when when your folks asked, you know, name a song, it had to be an Adele song. And this one has a special meaning to me. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch. But when show chef Martha Collison got on board and started sharing some of her amazing waitress recipes, well, that has to be one of my favorite things about doing the show. Martha Collison, show chef. Hi. Happy New Year, Graham. And I should say also thank you because uh, Christmas morning I did make the panettone <gasps> French toast. Oh, well, this is a great way to start the year. And it was <laughs> delicious. Oh, the family enjoyed they did. Well, I ate most of it, but... Uh, but <laughs> I mean, it just yeah. for me. Can you imagine? You can all have your well, cereal. No. I've already uh, attacked the trolley and <laughs> stole a mimosa. Uh, I'm not supposed to have it till after the record, but I thought, mm, it looks delicious. Oh, has the trolley really gone missing? My favourite trolley has gone missing. There's a few other options, but, you know, they none of them felt right. Where the hell has that gone? <laughs> Between yesterday and today? I don't know. This building is like a, a maze sometimes. Like, oh, no. I, I'd like to go to the bottom of this. Who the hell stole our trolley? <laughs> But, you know, I understand during the week things go on, but no one was... There was nothing that required no. trolley action yesterday. I know. Outrageous. It's Martha's trolley. We should say that you're not going anywhere. Uh, when Angela's here um, next week, you will be cooking up a storm for her as well. Yes, I've got a few weeks to remaining to cook up a few more things for Angela. Yes, and before your myst mysterious guests. Yes, <laughs> before your own <laughs> oven. Yes, <laughs> is ready to be opened. There you go. Exactly. Oh, uh, well, Martha, thank you so much for keeping me well fed uh, for the last few years. It's been such a treat and a privilege to get to eat all your gorgeous cooking. 
Really. Oh, it's really. been such a joy for me. Thank you so much for being so enthusiastic and encouraging and kind and welcoming to me. And there. so many top tips. I so many top tips, which now, of course, I can't remember any of them. But, uh, <laughs> but in my head, they're there. It's on the podcast. <laughs> there are things I do. There are things I do that you've taught me. Uh, thank oh, you so I appreciate much. That. Thanks, Graham. All right, take care and good and good luck with everything oh, in the future. Thank you, baby Graham. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely name. What that, a lovely that would be name. a gore- What a lovely touching <laughs> tribute that would be. And speaking of my favourite things about the show, uh, chatting to some of the huge Hollywood stars who've walked through the doors here at the top of the tower has to be a highlight for me. Have a look. And I read a thing where Tom Hanks gave you advice about not yeah. getting lost in yeah, Elvis. Yeah, and I really took that into the job I did after because with Elvis, it was all-encompassing. I didn't, I didn't, I put my life on pause for two years and I just, because I, I, I just, I knew how, how much, I, how easy it is to slip into the feeling of being an imposter in that situation. And so I thought, well, I got to just figure out how does Elvis brush his teeth? How does he get up in the morning? Like all the mundane things and then building from the foundation up. And so Tom did say, yeah, he was like, you know what? I like to read something that has nothing to do with the job that I'm doing every day. And so <laughs> now I try to balance life a little bit. Now, obviously you can't talk about your TV stuff and, no. and your filming stuff, yeah. but you are going to be starring as Tom Ripley in an eight part TV adaptation of The Talent Mr. Ripley on Netflix. Uh, yeah, I, I said it. I said it. Andrew said nothing about that. He, he didn't want you to know. And, uh, and you're also in uh, All of Us Strangers, uh, the new uh, Andrew Hay film, which comes out uh, in the 26th of January with Claire Foy and uh, Paul Meskell. Is all of that correct? It's correct. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's correct information. Yeah. That's I mean, correct information. It is very strange. It's a strange the, the, w- story. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, I, mean, I mean, the, the fight is worth fighting for. No, it's definitely a strange yeah. story. And aren't you lucky to be in a play? I'm very lucky to be Was this play. always the plan? This was always the plan, yeah. It was always the plan. So it was very fortuitous, i got to say. So I feel very grateful to be to be working and to be able to tell you that it's on. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and after this, he's making a documentary. <laughs> and uh, possibly a book. Possibly maybe a book. Maybe a book. Maybe yeah. a book. Yeah. And that album you've always that wanted album, to do. That typical first album. <laughs> <laughs> the guitar lessons, they start now. No, I will not inflict you <laughs> with that. Have you ever been in a musical? No, I'd love to be in a musical. Oh, my God. God, I love to be a musical, but I can't re... Well, I can sing a wee bit, but I can sort of talk, sing, act, sing. Do you know what I mean? Oh, he's so into musical. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really well a little bit. I, I, I can sing a little. Okay, okay here we go. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a keyboard. <laughs> oh, yeah, at least not a guitar. I won't we'll give you a guitar. You know, because you do The View, you're busy with that all the time, you, go, you don't get to do as much acting. I think no. people would like to see you in movies more. I would like to do more, but, you know... If you don't marry well, let's not really talk about it. You know, if you marry well and 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 you can take some time off. But I never married well and I step in poo all the time. So I always have to keep working because, you know, it just, I have to do it. And I, I'm so happy to get a job. I'm, you know, I just did something for Neil Gaiman, who I also love. You know, so I'm really fortunate because I have the career I want the way I want it. Yeah. I get to look like me, I get to sound like me, and I get to be me. And also, I suppose it's that thing where people don't know you're open to offers because they see you on TV every yeah. day, so they think, yeah. oh, Whoopi's busy, she can't yeah. do this. I am busy, but you know, if a random Doctor Who came along, <laughs> I could do it, you know. I, I understand I'm not going to be the new black Doctor Who, <laughs> but, you know. Tom Boggess says I can be in Doctor Who. So. Yeah, you could be related to the new Doctor Who. I think I could be Who's cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo. <laughs> Obviously, you're in a big prestige TV drama like Masters of the Air, Banshees of Inish Air, and now, like, no one could have predicted how Salt crazy Burn. Saltburn would go. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's ever, crazy. It's mad. It, it is everywhere. I've seen someone get a tattoo of the graveyard scene on the leg. What? On their leg? Yeah, on their leg, right? I mean, I thought they're back, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> on their leg, I was like, the wow. leg's difficult, yeah. Show out. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, nah, just being, you know, and Jacob Alordi candles and... Oh, yeah, did um, you um, did you watch him? He hosted Saturday Night Live sorry, last night. I was night. watching it last night, yeah. Oh, were you watching it? Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. I'm jet lag, so I'm up like at four, but not, that's not the only reason why I watched it. <laughs> I love Jacob. And, but, yeah. Uh, Nah, um, someone has a tattoo of a graveyard scene on the leg. That that's keen. That's keen. I'm there, like just yeah. lying on it. Yeah. 
it's only the, it's the start of the graveyard scene. It's not the yeah yeah you know yeah not there yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I hear you I hear you. So you you so get me on your show, Graham. Yeah. Will you? So you've done these iconic things, really iconic parts. So is there like pressure on kind of like oh my, what can I do now? What what's going to be next? Or are yeah. you going to go? Are you going to do something much more kind of low key? Do you know what? It's um, I I want to do Billy the Kid next. It's a it's a project that I've had in my um you know, in my mind for a long, long while and <clears throat> we're trying to get that going. But yeah, everything is... I is mean, this like the outlaw, believe outlaw, the case? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but I want to, yeah, every every choice is going to be, you know, I'm cautious of every choice now and trying to stir away from that saltborn kind of character. Yeah, 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 that. yeah. yeah. Um, maybe I can't. Maybe I, I won't. I don't know. We'll see. Regular listeners to the show and subscribers to our YouTube channel will know that we've had some of the funniest comedians on the planet right here uh take a stroll down memory lane now and take a look at some of these um they did studies with um uh you know uh what do you call it sort of adapted photographs so they put pictures of people in hot air balloons as children and then they showed them them again the next day and people could remember being in a hot air balloon because your brain just goes well must have must have done it yeah must have done it then so stand-ups this is why people hate going out with us uh we (laughs) we have a version of events we then tell everyone else and then that becomes the truth sorry i know i feel like i should warn what's in your butt in your tummy yeah (laughs) yes yeah Yeah. Yeah. you will be loved but you'll be material (laughs) (laughs) i'm really trying to try hard not to do that actually i do i'm really a minute i really hope i have unfunny children but also, that's why it's going to be better having two, because then they'll have deniability. If I say my kid did a thing, they can both say that was the, the other, other one. one. Yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, because because they're quite close in age. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're you're covered. Thank you. <laughs> I grew up in a part of South London that I think we would affectionately refer to as a bit dull. Uh, in, I grew up in Croydon. I went to school in Orpington, and there's not a lot of hero. <laughs> why, why has that got a laugh, Graham? Well, my auntie May live, used to live in Orpington, and yeah, you're right. It is. It is. So like, are we in Orpington? Is is, is this bit Orpington? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was an interesting place to grow up. And, uh, the, you know, there's not a lot of heroes that uh, are organic that sprung from there. This my Auntie is, May. The, your Auntie May, <laughs> yeah. Kate Moss. Very oh, really? Much a pod, yeah. Oh, wow. And, uh, and more recently, obviously, Stormzy. Uh, you know, I was at the Pyramid stage watching him in 2019 and laughing hysterically as Selhurst flashed by because he had this montage <laughs> of all the train stations around where he and I grew up. But in terms of when I was growing up, we did, they didn't seem to be, like, naturally occurring Bromley, Beckham, and Croydon celebrities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bowie was from South London. He's a South London boy. He was yeah. born in Brixton and he was raised uh, in Bromley and he lived in Beckenham all the way up to Ziggy. Like, the early performances of Ziggy Stardust happened in pubs uh, in Bromley. And uh, they actually asked him if he would come to a, a, like, plaque unveiling. And he was like, absolutely not. I live in New York and I have a great life. <laughs> Tell me about the, the genesis of this thing, because it came... Did, was it pitched you as a film idea? No, it wasn't a film idea. It was... But it was not my idea. It wasn't mine or... Uh... It wasn't mine or Jeff Guthheim's idea who wrote who wrote it with me. He, uh, no, sorry, not he, uh, a producer from Canada emailed me about four years ago and said, oh, I really like your work. I've got this idea that I think you'd be great for. Um, are you, <laughs> here's, here's, here's a request, are you ever in Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> If you're ever in Toronto, I'd love to. I'd love to meet you. Bizarrely, in about a month's time from re- receiving that email, I was going to Toronto. Ha! It was meant to be. No, really, that yes, is a bit. Swear to God. Is, yeah. And so I met him in 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 a yeah. We met and he pitched me this idea. We don't need, we to, don't need to know where. where. But, don't need but, to know but where. Thank you for the details. <laughs> I was about to say, why am I saying that? Yeah, I'd have had the soda. We met in this hotel. Um, <laughs> It was, it was just snacks. Like, it, was it was just snacks. snacks. <laughs> <laughs> the little sharing plates. It's a little it was sharing plates. Charcuterie. Plate. Charcuterie. <laughs> but I'm plant based. Um, so it was all a bit awkward at the beginning. In the young ones, some of those stunts, I mean, yeah. it was insane. The my, you my, did. my daughter read the book a few weeks ago and she came up to me and she said, she said Dad, I, I never realised that, that you were never really a comedian. You were you were a stuntman. <laughs> and, and I was, I think. There's. Paul Jackson, the producer, always had the idea that if you had a big joke, you should do it in front of an audience and get the big laugh. So there's an episode of the of the young ones where Rick and I are fighting each other again, uh, all around the house, calling each other virgin. And um, hey, virgin, we're on Virgin Radio. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, so, see how so on brand, that in. so on brand. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and there's, a, there's a bit where we we cut, we crash through the ceiling into the kind of kitchen set on a bed, 
and uh, we did it for real. It's, it's just bizarre to think. Could of. you about so twenty, 20 feet? Twenty-five yeah. foot drop yeah. um, in in a kind of metal crate with some. Uh, you know, boxes in it and a bit of <laughs> and a bit of bedding. And uh, if you look very carefully, I mean, it's one shot. And if you look, very, we, we get out straight away and start fighting him. But if you really slow it down, you can see that we're absolutely winded. <laughs> <laughs> a little shook. Yeah. Virgin Radio listeners know their music, so it has been a real delight to bring these amazing pop stars to you over the years. Starting with Freya Ridings, who was so good when she appeared here in the studio, just her and a keyboard, that I immediately booked her for the TV show. You are still the heart I want, heart I want to hold. Wowza, wowza, wowza. So, so beautiful. <laughs> I love talking with her. Are you happy it's over? Yeah. <laughs> You no, I'm it. relieved because it's like new songs, you know, the old ones are kind of ingrained in my brain, <laughs> but the new ones I'm like a bit scared still playing them. Yeah. And I was listening to that song and I was thinking, you know, because you're so hale and hearty and happy now, but when you wrote that song, you must have been singing it in just floods of tears. Damn. Yeah, it was actually true. It kind of came from like the deepest subconscious place. I'm not even sure I really like thought it. It was just a feeling. Um yeah, it was such a it was such a dark time. And then it was straight into <laughs> lockdown and it was like there was nowhere to hide from your feelings. You were like, you just have to stay with it at this point. Um so yeah, then that's the sort of beginning of the story of Blood Orange and then it kind of continues the, yeah. bit, the bitter into the sweet I mean I feel like a kind of creepy old man as you wrote your love life but it is the story of the album it so. is no don't worry it's true uh, so uh, you and your partner yes the, the, so he's that guy yes and now he's your husband we got married oh, yes. oh. so there's a happy ending for oh, once oh lovely I just want to we're running out of time but I just want to get to the end of the story the Wembley the, that, the, oh, wow. the, the, the day at Wembley yeah. it was it only afterwards that kind of the impact of it hit you for me, it was never emotional because I all, you know, we've got to remember we're really, really close friends. So you know that we've all done this. We're all so grateful for what we've done. I knew George was going to go on to this solo career. I knew Andrew had loads to do. And Pepsi and I had signed a record deal. Yeah. I'm excited to think, right, Peps, we're going to do our thing now. And But we're, our friendship was so strong. We weren't really losing anything. For you, what struck me was that, you know, so you guys were going off with your record deal. George was doing great. What was it like the next day? What was it like the day after for you, Andrew, when you woke up after Woke up in front of my hangar. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we had... Just going back to the show, I remember the, the, the George introed we, we, the show and, and with everything she wants, and he, he'd go and perform this routine with the two dancers, and it was endless and I remember oh, Cheryl going up and down up and oh no Cheryl, still Shirley, <laughs> up, he's going we, up like... we would be in tears back thinking how much longer honestly I mean to talk <laughs> that about was his Elvis moment wasn't it that's what I thought was the nearest he's come to being Elvis oh, was at Wembley yeah. Stadium yeah Hell, hilarious but you looked cool you looked very cool no and you were pe- you yeah. came in the long black coat yeah, 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 and yeah. I take the photo off. <laughs> it was all very cold, but it was, it was you know... It very tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, very tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. You know, we were playing to the gallery. That was that was part of it. You know, we, 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 we knew what the, the, the general sort of ideas of, you know, the fact that <laughs> I was, you know, a ladies' man, supposedly, and I had Cheryl and... and, and um, Pepsi Pets. disrobing me on... It was, it was <laughs> yeah, it was tongue-in-cheek. So there's, there's a few... Uh, pure Duran Duran songs but there are covers on it as yeah, well yeah. and because in my head a Duran Duran song sounds like a Duran Duran song because it is Yeah. but you make the cover sound like what is, what is I mean I know this is maybe impossible for you to explain but what is it what is your sound why do you why do you why well do you I do... think a lot of it's got to do with my voice because I've got a, uh, I just have a voice that doesn't sound like anybody else, um, which has been, um, which has been a millstone around my neck at times, and also a great advantage at times. Um, take a song like um, "Bury a Friend," which is you know, a, m- a fantastic song by Billie Eilish. Yep. Um, listen to her version, and fir- on first listen, I thought, well, how are we going to do anything that makes this sound like Duran Duran? But uh, Nick and John and Roger spent a lot of time putting this beautiful backing together. And um, so it came to me doing the vocal and I thought, I can't do an impersonation of Billie Eilish. A, because it's an impersonation. B, because it wouldn't be very good. (laughs) Um, And I'd been listening to this band called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. 
Try saying that ten times. Oh, really? Um, and they and they've got a very kind of one of their albums has got a very Middle Eastern tonality to it. They use this. Um, it's called a Persian scale or Hijaz Kar, the drop second to drop sixth scale. Also, oh, and right. I thought if I try, I try and sing the verse melody in that scale rather than the, the the regular Western scale, it might kind of make it a bit different. And as soon as I did it, I felt that I had a real handle on the song, and it suddenly sounded like us. Yeah. But but also songs that we know so well, like Ghost Town. Yeah. I mean, you you know, you say Ghost Town and people can immediately hear the special of their head. Well, but... I brummed it up. <laughs> oh, Ghost Town. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, you know, the, the specials are from the Midlands anyway. I couldn't figure out why they they hadn't brummed it up more themselves. Or, but, um, yeah, definitely too much fortune on the dance floor. I mean, that song, it, 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 are you are you bored with it? Not yet? at all, because no? okay. um, well, we turned up this morning and me and Sahil said, right, we're both obviously, we're in the same van down from Blackpool. And... Um, we said, I tell you what, let's do a very chill version <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah. I'd be worried that those uh, <laughs> spacemans would um, wouldn't sound <laughs> right otherwise. But they sound, I mean, your voice sounds extraordinary. It sounds supernatural. Um, thank you, mate. We Absolutely, were a bit, a bit yeah. worried this morning. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously this is a small interview, but since Eurovision, you've played some huge uh, mm. things. What have been some of the highlights between Eurovision and now? Um, it's, uh, it's hard to say because... When I think of some of the things that have happened, like there are things that you you don't even have those kinds of dreams. Like Queen, for example, my favourite band in the world. And like I remember trying to learn Brian May's guitar pl- parts and playing them in front of my mirror in my bedroom. You you dream maybe that you'd be in a band and play gigs like Queen one day, but you don't even consider I'm going to sing with Queen one day. Like it's, it doesn't like become part of the fabric of your uh, yeah. i don't know visions <laughs> but it happens so it's and what just do you amazing do? ah your vision sam rider which reminds me this is not goodbye it's au revoir you'll still hear me on virgin radio uh maybe around may and what's going on in may that sam rider might be involved in <laughs> hint hint yeah you won't get rid of me that easily that just leaves me to say thank you so much for being part of the graham norton radio show the waitrose for so long and while I'll miss doing these shows, you can guarantee that I'll be sitting at home with my feet up every Saturday and Sunday listening to Martha's recipes and just enjoying the shows along with the rest of you. Can't wait to see what's next. Green, 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 the Graham Norton Radio Show on Virgin Radio. Green, 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 green,